Okay. Fantastic. Well, is that that's Ahmed, isn't it? Yes. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. And thanks very much for um, joining the interview today. My name is Sid Lawrence, and I'm one of the directors of studies uh, for the medics at Sydney Sussex. And that basically means I help organise all your teaching and make sure if you have any uh, academic uh, questions or things you'd like help with, then I'm your first port of call. I also teach anatomy to the first year students. Um, before we start talking, I'll just explain a few things about the interview. Uh, this section will be about 12 and a half to 15 minutes, um, during which time I'll just, we'll talk about a few things and you might hear me typing away and writing notes, um, but don't worry about that. That's just me recording what we discussed so that I have a good, clear memory to, uh, when we think about it again later in the day um, with my colleagues. Um, the most important thing for the interview is if anything isn't clear at any stage, just stop me and tell me because it will definitely be my fault and not yours. And just ask me to re rephrase or explain something uh, more clearly. That's no problem at all. Um, and then right at the end, there'll be the opportunity for you to ask some questions. And that's not recorded or marked uh, or considered as part of the interview process. So don't have to ask any questions and anything you do is not judged or recorded. Is that all okay? Yeah, it sounds good. Fantastic. Well, firstly, um, you know, thank you for sending your personal statement in to us. It was very interesting. I enjoyed reading it. So thank you. And um, also very well done on all the things you've achieved so far at school and all of the... Um, uh, experience you've been gaining in medicine um, it's really encouraging to see so well done um, I noticed one thing that you wrote about as you, you talked a bit about um, reading about cancer and seeing some patients with various cancers and I just thought what what do you think what what do you understand by the term cancer so from sort of what we've done at school and sort of my just my wider reading and stuff like that um, cancer to me, I think, is sort of sort of this umbrella term for sort of uncontrolled cell division, things like that. Um, so when cells divide too much um, and sort of the checks and balances of the body don't go to plan um, and they evade the immune system and things like that, they can then grow mm. into this mass and potentially spread to other parts of the body. Mm. Hmm, well, that's very, yeah, very interesting. And um, I'll just make some notes. So, yeah, you said it's an umbrella term. So tell me a bit more about that. What do you mean? So, I mean, there's all sorts of different types of cancer, depending on, depending on sort of the, the tissue type, I guess. Um, so I think carcinomas are epithelial tissue, whereas sarcomas, I think, are more connective tissue. Um, and even within those, there are different types. You get like leukemias, skin cancer, like, the, like basically, I think almost every, any tissue can get cancer. I think, from mm. my understanding. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's a pretty fair thing to say. And you're right. So there are those broad categories, and within those broad categories, there is further, you know, hundreds of hundreds of types of cancer. So can you think of any, when, when doctors, we spend a lot of time communicating with the public, don't we? It's a, it's a big part of, of the job of medicine is helping the public understand health and helping them think of ways they can improve their health. Um, prevention being better than cure is the old saying. So do you see any, any problems that might arise in cancer particularly? With some of the with those efforts given what you've just said mm. so i guess because it's such a heterogeneous disease mm. it's sort of hard to simplify it down into a clear and concise message to for the public mm. um but i guess like on the other hand there are a lot of risk factors that are shared between different cancers mm. um, tell me about that so i guess <clears throat> So cancers usually arise when you get mutations in DNA. Um, so anything that increases the, the probability of getting mutations, so things like expo exposure to um, ionizing radiation, uh, smoking, uh, things like that on the whole tend to increase cancer risk across mm. 
a lot you know of any other factors. risk big risk factors those are two um, very good ones well done i think obesity potentially mm. uh, it's one big so one that you might... and exposure to uv light i think was skin, was skin cancer. yes that's a very yeah very specific one for for skin cancers might come back to that what's one big one that you're perhaps forgetting due to where you are in life oh age okay yeah, yeah. Okay. Why, do, why do you think that is um because i guess mutations can sort of accumulate over time mm. um so an elderly person will have more total mutations compared to mm. a young person yeah. um i think that just sort of like a numbers game the more mutations you have the more likely one of them is going to cause cancer i guess yeah it's like an, exactly yeah you all those risk factors or many of those risk factors you mentioned uh, in, the more time you spend around on the planet the longer the more the more total for radiation for example the more total dose you're getting um okay well you've you've, co you've, you've talked about an awful lot there um just mutations in dna how how do you link that you also mentioned cell proliferation and immune evasion maybe we can dig down into that so if you're a if you're going to form a tumor you're quite right that you can you can define loosely define a tumor as a a yeah a, what's called a clonal proliferation of cells although that definition has slightly Come, can be sort of picked apart slightly, but a, a clonal proliferation. So, does that does that mean anything to you? A clone? What, what's a clone? So, a clone, is sort of like an identical mm. copy. So, I guess. So, what do you think is happening there when the very so that when the tumor first arises? What mm -hmm. a clonal proliferation. So, I'm guessing you sort of get one cell that goes like rogue i guess and then that will divide by mitosis um mm. and because there's no sort of change in sort of the genome during mitosis all the mm. daughter cells will be the same or should be mm. the same mm. the initial so why point. does it take over then why does this tumor arise what you, you sort of talk so you've said cell proliferation what's and you've talked about mutations cell proliferation how do you link all that? So why is that cell proliferating so much? Mm. What controls, you've talked about mitosis, just yeah. tell me a bit more about that cell cycle. Can you remember the cell cycle? So you have, with the cell cycle, you have interphase, which is the majority of the cell very, cycle. Very good. Then a small part of that is mitosis followed by cytokinesis. Which is where the cells sort of split. Um, Very good. So I guess they're sort of, sort of like triggers that cause cells to go from interphase into mitosis, and maybe in cancer cells, those triggers are either those triggers are like turned on mm -hmm. constantly, or mm -hmm. maybe the the barriers to entering mitosis are removed. Right. So you've hit on two things there. You said you can either have a positive a positive enhancement where your triggers as you called them are are on more on so you're you're pushing it you can you can imagine winding the the cell cycle faster and then you talked about dropping the barriers so you're right there are checkpoints there are there are there are ways where uh, the cell cycle is inhibited by certain molecules you can, yeah, calling them barriers is a, a great idea. So, and you can drop those barriers. So, if you're push spinning the wheel faster whilst taking off the brakes, those are two of the what are called the hallmarks of cancer, two of the six. And you said something else right at the start, which is another hallmark of cancer. So, you okay, you've got this cancer cell that's that's there, it's growing. What else does it need to do to, to really be successful? So a bunch of cells, this tumour, mm -hmm. so it's accelerated growth. Mm -hmm. um, it's the brakes are off. So it's it, we call that loss of an inhibitor. What else would make this tumour successful? If we, uh, if, we, if we give it aims, it wants to grow as quickly as possible and spread. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess if I want to 
if it wants to grow as quickly as possible. So mm. now mitosis needs a lot of energy. Mm. Uh, so maybe it needs sort of it needs some sort of energy supply. So mm. um, maybe it can uptake like glucose from like the extracellular fluids more quickly than normal cells, or maybe it could actually cause blood cells to sorry, um, but new blood vessels to form or branch from existing. Yeah, good, and that's the fourth of the six that you've identified. So new blood vessels so they 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 upregulate genes that encourage um vascular growth so they will give themselves a blood supply and exactly right because if you're produce reproducing that quickly you need a lot of energy okay. and you, you you might read about afterwards some some drugs that specifically try and block that process so-called vegf inhibitors but uh Good. Okay. So what else? So you mentioned something right at the start about the immune system. What's all that about? Well, um, so I think normally like the immune system will pick up on mm. when cells start to divide, like out of control. Mm. Um, so for a cancer to actually arise and like a tumor to actually like get to a stage where it's causing problems, it must have evaded like the immune system before that. exactly and that's another so-called hallmark of cancer is immune evasion and again you might want to might find it interesting to to google um immunotherapy and immune basic chemotherapy that leverages the immune system as a as a as a weapon which has been in the last decade or so uh, quite a, a um, successful way of, of treating cancer Anything else? Well, if you think about it sitting in a tissue, this tumour, and it wants to spread out and it wants to get out, it wants to break out, what's, what's it got to be able to do? If you think about a basic tissue structure, mm -hmm. maybe, it's, maybe it's sitting in your muscle or something like that, or a piece of lung tissue, What's, and it wants to spread, it has to be able to do something in addition to just growing, getting blood. And so is there sort of like connective tissue mm. around it potentially mm. that'll stop it from moving? Yeah, exactly. It, yeah, exactly. That's pretty pretty much bang on. So it's it's limited by the architecture around it, isn't it? So what could it do, this tumour, to try and counter that? So I guess it has to go through it somehow. So maybe, maybe it could release like enzymes or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it can, can switch on genes or uh, that, that will uh, allow it to, uh, uh, invade through things like basement membranes you might have heard about in biology and 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 promote its ability to spread well that's very good and um yeah well um i think how, how long have we been talking for now probably 10 or so minutes haven't we so maybe we could just um think a bit more about these tumors so what what why on earth should a child get cancer then because you talked about smoking obesity age uv light so how, how is it that so many children uh, get cancer what do you think is going on there mm. is this assuming they aren't exposed to like Experiment. yeah no that's no a very radiation. good point actually that's a very good point yeah but um okay. you're quite right um that you do in medicine you do go get, uh, make sure that any pregnant woman doesn't get exposed to radiation for exactly that kind of reason so very good but what must be going on there so if it's not environmental factors mm. then it could be sort of inherited genetic factors maybe so mm. i've heard of a gene called uh, brca BRCA. yeah BRCA, very good like cancer risk so maybe there's something like that going on in children yeah so what, does sort of gene. 
what what does BRCA? I think you did you say breast cancer? I think you did, mm. didn't you? Yeah, breast yeah. and ovarian cancer. But they still don't get it in in their childhood. But you're right; mm. they, they tend to get it very young compared to the you know most cancers. Do you know any other any other what we call can, cancer syndromes? I guess you could have you heard of any cancer syndromes or seen anyone with these things? Um, so I think certain leukemias you can get in childhood. Hmm. Uh, there's a yeah, well, that, that's very good. Yeah, so you're, you're right. Leukemias are some of the commonest childhood cancers, and and your you know your your answer is is, is perfectly correct. But it's not environmental, so it's inherited. And so the idea is that it, some of these the things you've been talking about the cell proliferation the the brakes and the wheel spinning faster and all those things are are controlled by genes and if you have an inherited problem with those genes it's just like an, any other genetic disease apart from it can trigger a, 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 or leads to a susceptibility to cancer yeah well, that's very good and um just just maybe to finish off you talked about mutations in dna and um how, how does that how does it what is a mutation in a dna do you know any any types of mutation or what does that mean so a mutation dna um so i guess that's just a change in sort of the structure of dna so i think yeah usually it's going to be changing like one of the bases mm. that dna has can you remember um, those bases? What are they called? Uh, I, I always forget them. I think it's adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Very good, yeah. So a change in a base, that's quite a good, yeah. We can You can call that a substitution. So maybe you switch an A to a T. How else do you think you could mutate DNA? So you can have substitutions, you can have additions or mm. deletions, potentially. Mm. Mm. And what, what does UV do to DNA? Do you know? UV. Um, Seems strange that it would swap in a letter or, or add yeah. a letter in to the code. So, what do you think it does to it? So UV light. So that's, that's a high energy, high frequency mm. photon. Yeah. Good. So what do you so, think it's going to do if it, if it collides with a DNA molecule? Maybe cause it to be less stable. Yeah, it breaks it. Breaks it, okay. Causes a double strand break is the classic uh, problem. Okay. But that seems odd, doesn't it? Because there's UV all the time. So why why haven't we all just got skin cancer all over us? Final question. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll stop your skin so that, I know like the top layer of your skin is like dead cells. Is very that, good, very good. Maybe? Very good. So that, you know, that'll give you some protection, won't it? Still, there's an awful lot of UV out there. Mm. And I'm telling you, it's breaking, it's probably breaking DNA in my skin as we, uh, uh, double strand DNA breaks in, in my skin as we speak. Mm. So what must we have evolved to have? Oh, sort of like repair mechanism yeah. in, in your cells. Yeah, like when it happens, they fix it, basically. Yeah. And just, and for your, uh, as I leave you, for, you might want to read about uh, unfortunate children who are born with problems in their DNA repair mechanisms. There are various syndromes where the, the, me the machinery is, is faulty for repairing the DNA and that you can imagine causes all sorts of problems. Okay, well, that was a very um, enjoyable discussion. I hope it was interesting. Do you have any questions for me about the um, about anything, really? Uh, no, not the moment. Great. Well, yeah. Uh, thanks again, Ahmed, for, for attending. And uh, well done again on everything you've been doing. And, and please do keep it up. And um, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.